today we are going to discuss some more methods to determine the rate and the order of a chemical reaction among them the first one is uh, using a large axis of the reactants that can be also named the method can be also named as flooding or isolation and this is similar to Oswald isolation method uh, in this method the order is measured with respect to one reactant by taking all other reactant in large axis so that's why it is termed as isolation or isolating one reactant in this way their concentration will not change during the course of a chemical reaction so those reactant which are taking uh, in large axis so their concentration virtually remains constant during the course of the reaction or in other words uh, the reaction is made a pseudo first order or a pseudo a better word is a pseudo n order in one reactant by using large axis of other reactants now here we are giving a very general example of a chemical reaction which we study uh, by this method so in this case reactant a combined with reactant b and giving us product the red law expression for this particular reaction is given by this red law that is uh, a power m and b power n now we are taking one reactant in large axis and my determining the order with respect to other reactant and uh, we are repeating for the next reactant so in this case we are taking the reactant b in large axis and we are measuring the order with respect to reactant a so the concentration of b is made in large axis so it will not be influenced during the course of the reaction while the concentration of a that is the initial concentration of a changes by an amount x so uh, this is the concentration of a any at any time and when uh, x amount is decomposed into product so we have uh, the concentration of a that is left that is n naught minus x and b is uh, virtually remain constant during this reaction so we are going to try to modify this red like question just pass, uh, introducing the concentration of b that is remaining so n naught minus x and this is the b now uh, just modifying a little bit we are taking this b and k is constant and representing by uh, general uh, red constant is k prime uh, this is equation 2 now proceeding from equation 2 where this is k prime uh, this k prime is uh, product of k and uh, reactant b it is constant taking in large axis the red law uh, shown in equation 2 can be solved is uh, our previous equation for the different order of a chemical reaction depending on the m value what will be the m value so we can use the specific uh, integration equation for example this is just a, a choose a few example if we have this uh, n x power n a general n so on uh, integrating this we can we can use a general integration formula 1 over n plus 1 x power n plus 1 and other on the other hand if we have this x minus n power so we can use this general formula depending on the value of m the same procedure can be applied for reactant b and this is power n uh, by taking uh, reactant a n log axis and after solving by integration to find the n value the overall order of this reaction will be m plus n and in same way the rate law can be 
written for that example uh, in the first chapter we studied uh, an example of such kind of reactions in which one reactant was taken in large excess and the rate of the reaction was not dependent on that particular reactant uh, the reaction uh, which we have studied that was the reaction between tertiary butyl bromide and hydroxyl ion that was some kind of substitution reaction in basic medium and in basic solution uh, this basic solution consists a large axis of hydroxyl ion and the reaction is uh, first order and it is pseudo first order with respect to tertiary butyl bromide similarly many hydrolysis reactions they are independent on uh, the reactant water because water is in large excess but we have uh, some problems we are not all reaction can be studied by flooding method or taking one reactant in large excess because it uh, the large excess of both reactant will uh, cause the reaction to follow a different mechanism and okay we have started from techniques and methods so until now we have used methods because method is a group of procedure or a systematic process to achieve the final result but techniques uh, is immediate result give you immediate result or, and this is the variation and method but consistent with the method and this is coming from technical or technology so we are we have a manual methods they fail because of some past reaction so we can't use this manual calculation and for that we need uh, advanced technique to trace the kinetics of those reactions so those reaction might be in a solution phase or in the gaseous state so for that uh, reaction for those kind of reaction the flow techniques is used because traditional methods as discussed be before rely on following uh, reaction kinetics after the components of the reactants that is uh, of the reaction that is reactants form a homogeneous solution so when we have a, uh, a homogeneous mixture of the reactants then uh, we can follow after that the uh, kinetics of those reaction for example if we have reactant so reactant need finite time and that is known as transient period or pre steady period because this time is required for uh, attaining the steady state concentration of the reactants so the steady state concentration is the stable concentration of the reactant so for that for attaining that state uh, the reactant species needs some time and that is known as transient or pre steady state period but now there is a question in kinetics that uh, how or what will be done if this transient state or steady state period is uh, comparable or it is greater than the time the total time needed for the completion of the reaction then how the rate will be followed so kinetic rate laws that are traditional we discussed before can't be used and a different experimental technique is required to study such chemical process so they are they need some advanced technique and among that advanced technique uh, we are going to discuss that is flow method and the flow methods is a combination so this is rapid mixing devices uh, the flow method uses rapid mixing devices to study or to follow uh, the kinetics of past reaction in solution or even in gaseous state. So uh, there are different uh, types of flow techniques that is uh, continuous flow technique, stop flow technique. or a quenched flow technique so as the name indicate uh, we are going to discuss under the name that is continuous flow technique uh, is developed in 1923 by Hetrich and Rotten uh, that can be used to
study the reaction taking place in uh, quite shorter period of time that is in millisecond periods uh, this was first used uh, to study the reaction between uh, oxygen and hemoglobin uh, so that was the first case and later on that uh, can be used for several even for gaseous reaction mostly because uh, this needs a large volume so the operation it consists the two uh, reactants solution or post into a mixture chamber and, and syringe using syringe so this is the device operation that the two reactants A and B they are taken uh, introduced uh, into syringes that is inj injection syringes and they are uh, forced with the constant pressure into a mixture chamber and they are coming out from the mixture chamber we are uh, in this chamber in the mixing chamber they are mixed very fast and uh, they are coming out and going in the uh, tube and they are uh, actually detected where we have a moveable detector so we can fix this detector depending on our requirement so after liquid reactant mix reaction will start and the reaction makes the reactant plus product flow out to a place where the detector or detection is carried out by a detector so a suitable detector for such purpose is spectrophotometer which is based on absorbance or beard limber law you can see from where we can uh, determine the absorbance and absorbance we can can determine the concentration of either reactant or products depending on the the distance so this distance between the mixing chamber and detector is very very important the time of the reaction can be determined from the mixing chamber uh, that is the distance between mixing chamber and detector and the uh, flow rate so this uh, you already know that s is equal to vt so some kind of formula they introduce into the instrument or if it's operated by computer because in most advanced technology the uh, computer simulation technique can be used to control this the speed or the pressure of this injected injection syringe so by varying the time required to obtain a maximum aid can be obtained so if you are varying the time or this distance so maximum yield depending on this distance can be obtained uh, this can be used for example for uh, direction uh, mixture can be generated by microwave discharge where uh, hydroxyl free radical is generated so for the gaseous mixture can be used similarly we have another technique that is stop flow technique because the previous technique uh, that is the continuous flow technique need large volume of the sample but if you have a small volume then we have problem with that and uh, that is why the continuous flow is more practical for uh, studying gas phase reactions uh, and this stop flow technique where small volume is required is for solution phase reaction over the time interval uh, can be down as small as to the friction of milliseconds or even we can study the decay of uh, reaction intermediate which is very very fast so we can uh, determine the kinetic of very fast reaction uh, the, the instrumental uh, setup is almost the same that is the injection syringes A and B so where we inject uh, our sample reactant sample and it's going into mixing chamber and here we have after mixing chamber uh, traveling in uh, this uh, tube we have incident light so this uh, is a detector and detector can be different type that is based on uh, absorption that is UV visible spectroscopy or fluorescence or uh, laser light scattering or it may be electrical response so depending on detector where which detector is connected over here on the other hand we have a stopping syringe it's the name indicate so we have a stopping syringe and this stopping syringe when it is filled so
so it is connected into some sensor when it is filled so our detection is started here so it the principal operation it consists of two or more syringes that are coupled repeatedly coupled and uh, it repeatedly inject reactant into mixing chamber and then an observation cell that is detector is coupled to the instrument that measure absorbance fluorescence or light scattering or electric res electrical response of the sample uh, but when the observation cell is filled by an opposing piston so when this uh, uh, cell is filled that is observation cell uh, because of this uh, stopping syringe and this stopping syringe can be ad adjusted because it is linked to a sensing switch that start measuring so when it is filled so our measuring start here the model equation here introduced they are the same equation introduced into the instrument they are the uh, we are the similar to the conventional rate equation uh, the other technique is the quench to flow technique uh, the quench to flow technique uh, because we have problem uh, several reaction that can't be followed by absorption or electrical or fluorescence or light scattering so we can't uh, carry out uh, the detection using these detectors so we have problem for those kind of reactions so for those kind of reaction we need to stop the reaction somewhere and uh, the product or the mixture we have to analyze by other uh, appropriate manner so it it is practical to quench as the name indicate or stop the reaction after desired interval by adding appropriate quenching agent so uh, the reaction can be a uh, stopped or quenched by adding uh, appropriate quenching agent so different quenching agent can be used such as chemical quenching agent uh, when we make use chemical mixing uh, with other so solution of suitable reagent or chemical so that is chemical quenching or freezing quenching uh, so the name indicate is we can quickly lower the temperature of our reaction mixture so the reaction will stop because you already know the activation energy the minimum energy is required for the reactant to go to the product if we decrease the temperature so temperature has prominent effect so the reaction will stop or quench or optical quenching uh, in this case optical is name indicate we expose our reaction mixture to a suitable wavelength that is appropriate for stopping the reaction so the reaction will stop and uh, this is the experimental setup of the quenching method in which we have the same uh, syringes or we have more can be more in which we introduce our reactant and this is the mixture chamber and it is here is some wall connected uh, so when the mixture travel it accumulate here and after this uh, uh, coming out from this wall so the quenching will start so this portion is particularly after this wall uh, this is our quenching uh, part so from here onward uh, our quenching will start and the reaction will stop for example uh, example of such kind of reaction the enzyme catalyzed reactions are quenched or stopped by adding uh, an acid solution or base solution or salt solution because uh, these solution denature the enzyme as enzyme or protein in nature and uh, stop the reaction uh, the withdrawn reaction mixture or the sample then can be analyzed by a appropriate manner so we can analyze we can take away the sample and we can analyze outside our our experimental setup because there will be no more reaction going on and uh, uh, it can give us information about the kinetics of the reaction particular reaction